just a quick intro about myself uh, i'm ajo working with cognizant a consulting company here and working as a senior architect over over there predominantly on office 6 where but you know as it is also a place where i pretty much interested on and then you know as you see i am very much interested in coding especially on the react which is one of the javascript library offering i hope you have pretty much heard about it from facebook and then these are my public profiles so you can just search for aj0303 if you want to get connected with me uh, that's in a nutshell about myself so moving on to the topic that we are going to discuss today so the session that i'm going to take as you see is going to be an azure bot service but just before we jumping into the azure bot service or what exactly it is uh, we'll just have a quick intro into what azure as is because i know that we have been seeing sessions since morning and you know there will be some intros that would have already happened in terms of what azure exactly is but just before i jump into you know, azure bot service as such just give a quick intro about what azure is so as we all know it's a cloud uh, you know private cloud computing offering from microsoft right and the services are pretty much stacked across these three areas which is like ias pass and software as a service uh, before i just move into this uh, just want to know like uh, how many are new to the azure world in this audience okay and then like uh, yeah i know azure but not into the complete world of azure okay fine so pretty much uh, almost 60% of people are aware of what exactly these stacks are right so ias basically when we talk about ias is infrastructure as a service right so as a cloud provider uh, microsoft is actually giving you a service where you have the entire stack of things that you can build so basically they give a infrastructure for you you start building from the you know bottom from your uh, you know the basic of uh, network operating system and we about that so you are given the full control when you talk about infrastructure service and then we talk about pass or platform as a service where you start building your application but the baseline things like your infrastructure your network your platform everything is set up for you by microsoft and you pretty much concentrate on your development part and deployment part that's where pretty much the build comes in the picture and then we talk about the last one saas or software as a service uh we knowingly or unknowingly is pretty much using this saas as you know in your day to day life especially when we are all talking in terms of working from home or you know things you are pretty much having your online chat ups and calls or through microsoft teams right which is one of the offering within the office six face suit which is a software as a service product uh, you might be using uh, microsoft word offering as part of your office six face subscription which is again a software as a service so essentially you are using a product that's been given by microsoft that's where you know software as a service comes into picture so these are the three kind of offerings that are offered by any cloud computing platform but there are some call outs that are pretty much from the azure perspective uh, next some key concepts i don't want to dig into much into this but as we progress with my session and demo you will be pretty much hearing uh, some of these terms so just want to relate you with those terms so Uh, rather than coming from top to bottom, I'll just go from bottom to top. So, the source of what are basically the services that have been offered by Microsoft or any cloud computer. For for instance, you want to build a virtual machine, right? That's a service being offered by you, and that you call as a resource, right? So that's one of the resource. The Azure Bot service that I'm going to talk about, that's another resource. Now, when you come to an enterprise level, or you know, there'll be different projects, different teams that are working, and all the teams may not require all the so services that have been offered. so you bundle those into a particular resource groups that's how, that's what's called resource groups so you let's say i'm building a web application i might need a you know a virtual machine i might need an application to deploy it so i might be using those two services and i bundle that into a particular resource group so that's essentially what resource groups are and then we have something called subscriptions that's where you know your license and models have been tied to so as a person uh, Uh, the company might be giving me a certain resources that i need to work with i can access to so i'm in a say in a subscription and that's what is basically coming into the subscription part so resources are actually tied with the subscriptions right and management group that's where you actually manage those subscriptions through your access and policies we are not talking going to look much into management groups when i speak but just giving you a highlight this is how the the hierarchies are being structured when you look from an azure perspective right So now moving on to what's a chatbot, right? So you know, pretty much everybody is aware of chatbot. 
if you open any e-commerce website, if you open a bank, you, some, you suddenly see something popping from your site, how can I help you, right? We are pretty much, I think most of us ignore that, right? But some, because some questions are like, hey, how, how good happened, how can I help you, right? But you're pretty much looking through your uh, pseudo products, what you want to purchase, so you pretty much ignore that. But the power of the, you know, the chatbots are super, you know, super, if you see, it can help you with a lot of questions, answers, right? And that is actually taking the overhead of the so-called customer support that we used to have before, right? Where you wait on the call, get a person coming to you, talking to you, and then they find, oh, this is not the right person to talk. Then you, you have to again drop off, go to an next person, right? So it takes care of all those overheads. Rather, this gives you a better experience. And that's where you know, the power of chatbots comes into picture. So basically, as you see over here, what is happening here? Underlying is, you know, it's actually leveraging something called artificial intelligence, natural language processing to actually answer your question, right? And I've just put a quote from, you know, the father of artificial intelligence, John McCarthy, like, you know, what it's basically the science that's actually making computer to think like a machine, a, a human being, right? And that's what is chatbot basically is going to the, give the power to all of us. So rather than having a physical person coming and assisting you with, there's a chat board for you, <clears throat> talking to you, answering your questions, and then saving you all the details that you're needed. At a high level, this server chat board is basically working. So you get a pop-up coming or you know a message coming up. You enter the information that you want. The chat board receives the con content. And then it actually processes that. And that's where you know the artificial intelligence, natural language processing comes into picture. It's, it's, it's a big world. I don't want to dig much into how all those things are happening, how those orchestrations are happening, but this is essentially what's happening in the background. So basically, as, as you tune your, you know, you know, the artificial intelligence part, natural language processing, you inculcate everything into that particular tuning part, and then that's where the chatbot become more intelligent in terms of saving the right information to you, right information and the right kind of content that you can understand. And finally, the chatbot, you know, returns the customer the same channel where you access it. When I say the channel, channel can be different. If you see, uh, you know, if you go to Facebook, you can see a pop-up coming. You can integrate chatbots into Facebook, right? So the medium of channel over there is at Facebook, your chatbot. So you talk via the chatbot through ch uh, Facebook, get the information back to the chatbot through the same channel, which is Facebook. So this is at a high level how the chatbot is basically working. Now coming to Azure Bot Service, what exactly Azure Bot Service is offering on Play for you, right? Uh, when you talk about Azure Bot Service, the entire service have, is actually segregated into three parts. So Azure Bot Service, so if you see the three, four sections that I mentioned, so one is your comp development experience that is going to be provided for you. So as part of the Azure Bot Service, there's something called Azure Framework or Azure Z Framework SDK. That's kind of a software development kit, which is in background, which can be leveraged to do your development experience. That's for the developer people. So, and then it's being powered by world-class AI. When I say world-class AI, there is a service within Microsoft called Microsoft Cognitive Service, which essentially have all these features like AI, natural language processing, LUIS, all those features. So with Azure Bot Service, using the AI Cognitive Service, you, you actually leverage the functionalities to embed, you know, language processing, uh, functionalities and then this is the multi-channel experience that is there once you have your bot service on azure developed and deployed you can publish it to different channels when i say channel facebook is one of them there are other channels which are opened and supported by azure platform for your channels so that's what is happening in your multi-channel experience and the last one the brand and the way the data is being secured because we are talking about azure the primary concern or the thing that Microsoft always addressed for an Azure as a platform is around the data security, right? They spend almost 1 billion every year just for the security purpose. So that's where the power of Azure has been leveraged for building AI bots, you know, bot services. Now, how we are, how we are supposed to build a bot, right? The first and foremost, the main important thing is to plan it, right? When you say planning, it's not a typical uh, software a develop a design process that we follow. We are talking about both. So we do a lot of interactions to the people. Let's say we are talking about a banking customer service board, right? You actually go and talk to the customer service people who are actually forefronting and talking to the customer, understand their 
you know, the questions, the pain points, the way they interact with the customer. That's where the planning comes and, you know, the, the main platform or the pillar for you building your boats. And then you start the development, this is the build part. So as I mentioned, there are frameworks that are available as part of boat. Uh, service has been offered. So you, you leverage those frameworks for building your boat. And now comes the testing part. So testing part is the most trickiest part because there are a lot of moving parts within the boat that you're building. And we have to touch each and every point while you're testing it. And that's where the testing part comes. And finally, you publish it. So publishing is to the, you know, the Azure boat service. That is where you'll be publishing your boat to. And then comes the connect part, the channels to which you'll be connecting, where you want your boat to be, you know, talking to, which endpoints it needs to talk to. So that's the last bit of here, which is the connect. So are we done with that? Are we done with that? You have deployed your, you know, your uh, boat to the channel, people started using fine, are we done? No, the last bit, but it's not a stopping bit, right? You need to keep evaluating, right? And that's where you are looking at the data and you try to tune your boat to answer more questions, right? More interactions that you see. You might see, okay, this boat is not behaving well for certain intent of a particular customer. And that's an ever going process. It's a cycling process. You have to keep looking at your boat, see what is missing, how you can actually make the performance better, the response better, things like that. So that's the evaluation part. So this is pretty much the, you know, the life cycle about how you build a boat. So you start with the plan, build, test and publish. I'll be going to a demo today where I'll be, I won't be doing the planning, but we'll be pretty much going through the build, test and the publish part, right? So this is how we build a boat. So uh, before we build the boat, I just want to introduce to one of the latest releases from Microsoft, which is called Boat Framework Composer, right? So this is a kind of a, a visual authoring tool where it, it's super easy to go and, you know, build board. So just want to know like how many of you have worked on Office 6, 5 Power Platform? Have you got, all right? All right, cool. So Office 6, 5 Power Platform is actually a SaaS offering from, uh, from Microsoft, which is a low code, no code platform. And the experience that you see over here would be pretty much similar to that. It's, uh, it, so we have got a similar, uh, offering on Power, Pla uh, Power Platform called Power Virtual Agent, which is again something built on top of the Azure Bot service. And the experience that you see here is pretty much similar to the way that you work over there. But this is one of the framework that's been offered by Microsoft now to build your boats. And this is built on the, uh, you know, the boat framework SDK that I mentioned. So while we go through the uh, demo, I'll be showing it. But this is pretty much the interface that you'll be seeing for a boat framework composer. So, uh, there'll be a navigation pane, there'll be a board explorer, and there'll be an authoring canvas, finally a properties pane, right? Uh, this is how the interface will look like. I'll go through this, you'll be able to see what exactly is happening in each and every individual sections. And one prerequisite for working with this are like, we need to have two of those prerequisites. One is mandatory, which is a node. Uh, how many of you have Node.js? What exactly is a Node.js? Okay, um, there are about uh, JavaScripts. You know what JavaScripts are, and our thoughts are on, you know, JavaScripts are something that always runs on a browser, right? Like, you know, you show a pop up or things like that. And Node.js is a, a, a framework which actually let us to run JavaScript on, on your browser, on your servers, basically, on your machines, right? That's, that's the intention of Node.js. So why we need that is to, for this framework to run, we need that to be on your machine as well. So these are the two prerequisites we need to dip, uh, you know, install on your machines before proceeding. But the first one is definitely a mandatory one, right? All right. Uh, an interesting question that Sam asked me when I started my session was like, are we going to fit into this 30 minutes, the both, you know, the session. And so I told, I'll talk less and make uh, do things more. So I'll quickly jump into the demo that I'm going to do today, which is basically I built an app, and that's going to you can give the name, and uh, don't blame me. I I actually rely on API to give me the data about a particular person's age. So that's for the API to give me the name, back, I mean the age back of the person. So if anybody want to try it out, maybe you can try and see it. But it actually gave my age correctly when I tried it, but few of my uh, other tries were wrong. So let's try it out. But this is what the demo I'm going to do today. It's basically I build a chatbot, you just read in your name and it will reply saying, this is your age, right? And uh, I've just showed you those three faces that I'll be 
going through. So basically, I show you how that particular boat was built, how the testing can be done, and then how I will be publishing it to the Azure, right? Okay. I'll now open up the board frame of Kambosa, the ID that I was uh, that I used for uh, building this board. Just open and take me some time. Yeah. All right. So this is the board framework Kambosa that I just mentioned. Uh, it's downloadable on Microsoft website. Uh, we can go and just download it's a free software. Nothing much to do, but we need to have those two install. I mean, at least not just to be installed before we go through. And this navigation pane that I just mentioned. And this is the board that I've actually created, right? But you actually go and start creating from this create new. And they'll be showing, you know, there are two options which you can use. It'll be either based on a C sharp based platform or you can use a node. Okay. I'm not going and building it will take some time. So this is how you typically go and start creating a board. So uh, and then you go to next, it will ask for a few information and then finally you will have your board being listed here. Right. And I've just created the board for board already, which is called credit age board. I'm just going into that. All right. So this is how the uh, you know the pottery canvas look like. You've got the navigation here. This is your boat explorer, and this is the you know the canvas area, and this is the property screen. Okay, and you can see a couple of things here. So when I actually build the boat for when I come up from the empty template, you will have this particular section. This is will be created for you by default, right? And this is what you call as a dialogue, and underneath the dialogue we have got triggers. Okay, how it is connected is dialogue is basically the place where you have all your logics. And trigger is asking you, okay, initiate this dialogue, right? So if I give a word, right? Let's say uh, I want I want to get a weather details, right? That is a trigger. So I say weather is my trigger, right? And when I get that trigger, I need to say which dialogue have to come through, and I like write the logic for handling those actions within that dialogue. So this is how the triggers and dialogues are related to, okay? Uh, so the top one over here, that's the board. Predict page board, the top one that I'm showing, that's your board. And beneath the board, you have, when you create it from a template, you will have this basic scaffolding coming up. And there you'll be see a greetings dialogue uh, trigger, right? And this will be created for you, the first instance. And these actions would be, these actions would be already there. Or we call this as activities. This will be already there, right? And then what I've done is, there is a, there will be a default message. You can customize that. And I put, Welcome to inspiration. I made it to you know meet the customer's need, right? What is exactly what they're supposed to do over there? And then that's that's the basic thing. And then there's an unknown intent. If so, if a customer enters something that is not known, you can say an unknown intent. So I didn't get that, right? And then you go ahead and start creating your dialogue. The dialogue to do what next, right? So if you go to this one, I've created a trigger here called age. Okay. This is a trigger, and that trigger says, "Okay, when I when this particular thing comes through, call this dialog, which is get get age, and I've created a get age dialog here. And what is basically doing is, is asking few questions. Okay, it says, "Let me predict the age, and ask to enter a name, and then it will capture the user's name that's been entered, and then I call an API, and that API actually processes a result for me, <coughs> and then display that." Okay. Additionally, I've shown one more. There are a few other offerings. I've just shown another offering how to better structure your information. This would be like a plain text, but there are options to, you know, make your data presentable, like, you know, a good, uh, you know, UI and things like that. So I'll show that how it is up here. So this is the build part, which you have done. And, you know, there is a good documentation on Microsoft website where you can see this, how this has been done. Right. But just giving you an idea about this is how the different components have been tied in your, uh, in a boat. Right. And then comes the testing part. So you have an option here for start board, right? When I click on start board, it's spinning up. So I haven't deployed to Azure anyhow. It's still in my local on my uh, on my laptop. 
And that gives that experience that you know you can build end to end, do the testing before you get into the Azure platform, right? So it's just spinning up, starting the boat for you, and taking a while. Yeah. So you can see there's a pop-up that have come up now, right? So there are two options for me to test it now. I can either open it in a web chat or test in an emulator. If I want to test an emulator, there's another download I have to do to get that testing emulator being on your machine. Having done that, I'll just quickly go through how to do the testing on open a web chat. So when I click on open a web chat, see they have given you an option to do it, your testing here. So that's the first text that I showed you, right? The welcome one. And then I say, okay, I want to, let's say please enter the name, right? I'm happy to disclose my age. So I give my name and says, you know, you're 37, right? And that's the last card I showed you here. So this is a plain text, right? This is just blindly showing the text, but you can make the, the experience more inducive with all these offerings, you know, that's there. So once you're done with your testing, fine, happy, then comes the publishing part. Now you do need to deploy it to Azure, right? And that's the option that you see here. You have this option here, right? You come and say, the board will be displayed here and before you won't have, you won't see this one because I haven't created a profile, but the first step to do over here is to manage your profiles. And that actually create a profile for you. And that profile is basically what I mentioned, right? Uh, if I go to manage profiles and add a new, I'm gonna say the name of the, prof the profile that I want to publish and I say publish both to Azure. And then since there's already an available profile, it's not allowing me, but I'll show you what's the information that I've given over there. So it goes to a couple of steps. You need to find, uh, that's where I mentioned, that's a resource. So you're going to create a new resource. And when you create a new resource, okay. Sorry. Yeah, so you can see my current subscription being populated which is the subscription that we're using at the moment. So that's where the building comes to, right? Uh, the resource that have been assigned to for me. And then the resource group, that will be something you have to create. You, so the thing is, with this particular interface, the board framework will take care of creating everything for you, rather than you going to the Azure portal and doing things for you. So you select which resource group you want to put into, you give a name for that, you need to pick a region, and then the LUI's region. This is, I don't want to get much into that, but you know, regions are basically your, uh, you know, the apps are going to be deployed to, the services are going to be deployed to. So I picked Australia East, and then once you're done, the profile will be created for you. After the profile is being created, I'm not proceeding further, but after the profile is being created, your boat will be here, you can go and publish a selected boat, right? Once this is selected, uh, once you publish your boat to Azure, this is the Azure portal, Hope pretty much you already have seen this one. Uh, yeah, you can go to all resources. So these are the list of resources that have been created now after I publish. There will be certain other resources that are independent for you to publish. It will be listed in the page when you publish it. So some of them are like, you know, application insights, app service plans, some of them are default. And this is the board service that I've created, right? If I go into the board now, this is the, the, the service, which is the Azure bot service, which I've published now. You can see a couple of information here. And then the, you've got an option called test in your web chat. Again, you've got an option to test it in Azure portal now, right? And that brings up this console, pretty much similar to what we have seen now. You can see the same experience here, right? And previously I just message, I put in the text, just say age, right? And I can say, I want my age. So this is where, uh, you know, you, the trigger that I mentioned was just age, right? If I get a keyword age, I have to trigger it. So if you see when I was testing it, I mentioned only age, but here I'm giving an entire sentence. And the board is intelligent enough to pick that word, age from that, extract it, understand the intent of the user, and present them with the next question, which is which I mentioned in my dialogue. And say, please enter the name. Anyone want to give a try? Yeah? Tony? Tony? Right? Right? Don't blame me, it's my API. Come on, Bernie, I'm not 
Okay, maybe I'll try to search for another API which can give me the right result. <laughs> so yeah, there are more things I want to explore, but you know, uh, this, this is at a high level about you know intro to Azure Bot service. Yes,